Welcome guys back to Cut Hour Life and today I just wanted to show you what I'm gonna do real quick. Let's wait for the plane to pass by. So today, like I said, I'm gonna try to install my new uh, spacer plate between the, the head and the valve covers. Uh, I currently have the twin turbo spacer plate, which is a, it's a base, they also call it a cover, valve cover base, bunch of names anyway. So I have the twin turbo one with the rail that's going on the side for the IVH. And I have the, the single turbo with the one plug on the side. Let me show you real quick. So this is what I'm talking about. You see how the paint is all peeling and stuff. So of course I want to get rid of that. So this is going to go away. And let me show you what I mean by the, by the two plug versus one plug. See the twin turbo has a two plugs on the side, on the driver's side. So this is going away. I'm also gonna replace the the sensor harness. I apologize for this camera. Okay. Anyway. So also I'm gonna replace the sensor harness, which is not a big deal. I have a brand new one, and uh, with the new sensor harness, I'm gonna for a new boost sensor yeah let me show you what I got this is the valve cover base I had a powder coated chrome which is you don't see much and I also have the 12 gauge mirror brackets I'm gonna be installing today all together with the brand new filters for the air cleaners Put on new filters and yeah just uh, just a little maintenance a little upgrade i say it's not a big uh you know it's not a big work i'd rather just do it myself instead of paying people to do it for me it's gonna take me a few hours maybe tops um what else what else i probably would like to install also the air ride but that's gonna be uh, probably monday because I, I need a shot for that. I can probably knock it up here. You know, it's not a big deal. Uh, the most important thing is to jack up the truck a little bit and, you know, remove a bunch of bolts right here. That whole bracket comes off. Sorry, whole bracket comes off. And then on the front, you have a single bolt for the pin to come off, you know, shock. Yeah, it'll be a fun project for sure. The air right I've been Meaning to install for hella long, and I think it's about time to install it now. But yeah, guys, um, that's it pretty much. Nothing, uh, I ain't gonna do nothing to the trail or anything. Everything's good. Uh, if I have time tomorrow, I'll probably uh, try to knock up my interior. I'm gonna change some lights, some watermelons and stuff. Uh, probably redo the headliner insert. We'll see about that. Hopefully, hopefully it works out. But yeah, guys, um, first thing, first things first is I gotta remove the intake pipes because they're kind of in the way. Yeah, I'm gonna remove the intake pipes and then I'm probably gonna start taking off the valve covers. So yeah, let's get it going. I'm also going to start with this, 90, the first 90 degree. Just loosen this. Just loosen the, just loosen the clamp first. Yeah, there you go. It's called a clamp. Okay, Alex. I'm losing wood, guys. It ain't easy. It's not easy to be stupid. Go the other side. That's it. I'm just gonna put it on the side. I usually like to put it behind the truck, 
that way it's uh, safe and nobody's gonna like step over it or run over this thing there you go put it behind my truck right here hopefully i don't bleed too much too hard on this microphone Okay, that one's too tight. You get the deal, I'm just gonna knock it up, show you next. All right guys, next thing of order is to remove the harness from the ECM. So <clears throat> I'm gonna try to remove that. Okay, that's that. The one plug that's unplugged. Now I have to like remove the temperature sensor from the fuel filter. And the rest, I guess. I think I got it. Okay, let's unplug the boost sensor. Okay. Now I have to unplug the cam sensor. There we go. The cam is unplugged. It's also called the cam position sensor. I mean, simple, right? Now I have two two sensors that are going to that are going to the temperature. Oh, hold on, I gotta cut this out right here. I got a lot, a lot of cleaning to do. A lot of wires, a lot of stuff. Okay, let's see what's inside this wiring room. Alright. Now there is a sensor that is not plugged. It's called coolant diverter valve. It's because this wiring harness is from a BXS engine. And that's why I'm kinda having a little bit extra plugs and stuff. But that's okay. That's not a problem guys. Now I have to kind of reach down and try to unplug the crank sensor. It's all the way down at the engine. So that will be a little pain, but not too big of a pain. Let me see if I can show you. Ah, you see? It's not a big one. I mean, not a big deal. There we go. Okay, now I gotta cut this. And I also put a towel on top of my engine because I removed the spacer and it's all exposed. So always make sure your engine is covered. I mean the top of the rockers and stuff. That way no dirt comes in and you know destroys your cam and rockers and everything. Okay, so it's pretty nasty. It's normal. Nasty is normal. And now the hardest part I think would be the coolant sensors. Because they are tucked in way down right there if you can see. Sure. It's gonna take some time to get to them. But yeah, you guys stay tuned. Whew. And I'll show you.
I guess let me show you something that I think it's important though. So I'm trying to plug in the coolant temperature sensor, right? This is how it is. There's an opening in the front that I render. I ran the wire from the top, I fed it into the hole. And if you can kind of see over there, let's see if I can show you. All right. Okay. So the sensor right behind this, uh, the water pump housing. Extremely hard to put a finger in there, let alone a hand. So I'm gonna have to kind of play with this now, trying to feed it and uh, hook up the, the, the little sensor harness. So wish me luck. Hopefully, hopefully works out. Otherwise, I might have to take a bunch of stuff off. And that won't be fun. That won't, that will be miserable, guys. All right, so. The most important thing is to find out where the actual, I think I got it. Can you see over there? Now I have to remove my, uh, okay, little, Bicycle. <laughs> all right, that wasn't that bad. That was not bad at all. That was the hardest sensor to plug in. To plug in, I mean. So now I'm gonna do the rest of the wiring. Turn off my light. Okay. This is the old one. Oh, actually, I was gonna say, I was gonna show how it was rubbing against the engine. And I was soon to be having some problems. Yeah, I'm glad I removed this harness some time. Perfect time. So yeah, pretty straightforward now. This thing goes down to the crank, to the crank sensor. These two are going to oil pressure and atmospheric pressure sensor. This goes to the crank, I mean the camshaft right here. Right there, we got a boost sensor, and this would be my uh, fuel temperature. And one more we have right here that's gonna be my uh, intake air temperature sensor. That's it, there's not much to it. We got I intake air temperature, fuel temperature, we got cam position, crank position, boost, oil pressure atmospheric and coolant eight sensors guys that's how simple this engine is eight freaking sensors <laughs> i like it i like it i'm gonna be installing the new valve cover spacer or valve cover base i got a brand new harness from cat this is the part number I was interested. Let me close this door. Let me get the head so I can look a little bit better. And let's go. So, it shouldn't be that complicated. It should be pretty straightforward. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is um, actually supposed to run this through the hole right here. You can see so this will be the driver's side and uh, you gotta run like this just make sure you don't mess up your wires while you do that it's gonna cost you some money all right so I know there's supposed to be a gasket so I'm gonna probably have to do is um, make my own gasket. I'm gonna use the gray stuff, gasket maker. And that way I'm gonna ensure that it's not gonna leak out. Because the fact that the gaskets, they, they always leak for some reason. But yeah. I'm gonna get my zip ties. Zip ties real good. And um, 
get it going. Then I have to figure out which wire is, is going to be the positive and negative for the solenoids for the jig brake. This is number one cylinder. Number two. Wait, my bad. One, two. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Show you when it's all done. guys think about this huh pretty good huh not too shabby I'm putting back the fuel line that was in my way make sure this everything is tight but not too tight okay This, uh, I put a little bit of a uh, RTV sealant or a gasket maker, whatever you want to say, whatever you want to call it, man. And uh, it should be good. And should be good till tomorrow. So it'll dry up. I just need to go get some new bolts because uh, the old spacer plate or a valve cover base, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> was um, he used longer ones and short ones. This new one only use a short bolt so I need to get one two there's a long one here I'm gonna use one three four and three on the other side so I need like six or seven short bolts that I'm gonna do I also decided I want to clean up the, the harness a bit like I want to clean this whole thing a bit because it, it looks like sh you know it don't look good so I'm gonna close the I'm gonna put the, the valve covers now so nothing gets in I'm gonna start organizing the wire here, putting it together. Hopefully, I can make it look better. Yeah, I'm gonna fire it up later. Make sure it runs good. What's happening, guys? Day number two, about to finish up the wiring. So, I decided to uh, clean up the firewall that we saw yesterday. Um, so basically kind of clean it up a little bit and I'm going to run everything in one like a one uh, loom and across the firewall ideally I would love to like do a hole right here or right here somewhere and run inside and clean all this thing out but that would be probably a little bit later right now I'm just going to do this so I'm going to clean up a bit I remove the horn horn's going to go down right here somewhere I'm going to buy some aftermarket horns and make them even louder um, but yeah there's nothing there's nothing much to it just you know take your time and it's not as hard as you can as you think it is I bought some uh, brackets for here I'm gonna hang the wire just like that it's gonna be nice and clean and um, yeah man that's about it I had to relocate the fast pump relay right here so I'm gonna hook it up later and I'm just hide it behind the the cab harness and uh, what else this is the harness for the AC coolant level and um, what is that the washer pump so I'm not sure it, it used to go right here it runs on this side but I kind of like a more cleaner look so I think I'm gonna run it 
like that and on this line as well and that way I'm gonna have just a little loop co coming here if you, have a pit, if you have a pit rebuild you know how when it comes from here sometimes it just it just hanging too low to like the fan and everything but when you put it here it's gonna be away from everything and it's gonna be much cleaner you can even route it behind a little bit and hide it so it's gonna be even better yeah guys just like I said take your time guys I'm getting ready to install the intake let me show you what happened here everything is installed bolted down all the wires are in they're insulated they cleaned up pretty well really really good I couldn't believe that I could do it but here we go see how I ran everything you know I wrapped it in this special tape it's a it's automotive harness heat whatever bullshit tape <clears throat> um, I ran this uh, charge harness on top and the ejecting harness is on the bottom and then I ran all the sensors in the bottom kind of hidden out of everywhere of everything now next thing would be to wash it up really good because I haven't been taking good care of the engine and uh, tomorrow I'm gonna go to cat and get two little standoffs that they go here so I can run this wire right through, just like that it's gonna be sitting on some brackets not touching the engine uh, but yeah, make sure the native is in, in the intakes and um, let's put on, this is the horn by the way, I'm still waiting for my new horns, aftermarket horns, um, yeah, I love it, it's way cleaner than what it used to be, um, alright, let's put it on. Check again. Check again that I didn't miss anything. Okay, everything's plugged. Oh, by the way, I was like tucking wire yesterday, and this is the the mount where the cap sits on top on the bracket. You hear this? That bolt is loose, and I don't see an axis to make it tight so this is pretty bad I'm gonna have to figure something out how to fix that shit make it tight this is not good you should be able to I don't know there should be access from somewhere to hold the bolt but yeah anyway make sure everything's plugged all the sensors both sensors plugged up the temperature is plugged cam Crank is plugged. Um, we got oil to check. I hope it starts right away without problem, but I'm I'm thinking something's gonna be off. So, uh, all right. Well, let's give it a try, I guess, guys. Let's start her up and see if she uh, gives me any problems. Hopefully not, but you never know. Okay, let's, let's get it. 
Not a problem, right away. So just uh, the deck. good guys that is great Everything works, everything is hooked up correctly. I would like to take it for a test drive because I put a new boost sensor, so I might do that, we'll see.